Ladies, my name is Sonia Jackson here with the Assist Ministry, and I thank you for joining us today with our um, study on the book of Colossians chapter 3. And uh, today I'm going to be sharing with you Colossians 3, 8 in putting off anger. Yes, we definitely want to put that off. So um, just as we learn in discipleship one, and we were both we were born with both a sin nature um, through our physical birth and through our spiritual birth with Christ, we have a spiritual nature. And that's supported in Colossians verse, I'm sorry, chapter three, verse one, and then five through seven. If ye be, be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Mortify your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience in the which ye also walked some time when ye lived in them. Now, I'd like to stop here, and before my key verse, providing scripture with scripture, um, I want to talk about Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. And you have he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, <clears throat> Where in times past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. <clears throat> Ephesians 2 and 3 says, Anger is of our physical nature, among, among whom also we all had conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh, and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. So it's our nature to become angry. And I know you knew that. <clears throat> However, anger is not of our spiritual nature. <clears throat> so, referring to our key verse here, Colossians 3, verse 8. But now ye also put off these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Webster's defines anger as a feeling of displeasure, rage. Strong's defines anger as desire, <clears throat> violent passion, wrath, indignation. So it's a feeling or a desire. Because we still have our old sin nature, we have rage and violent passion. For some of us, <clears throat> and I do mean I, have spent a good part of my life being angry. I was hurt by someone that I trusted, and I trusted this person naturally because that's what I was supposed to do. <clears throat> For years, I was that way. Even after believing in Christ's death, burial, and resurrection, I mean, I carried it from childhood to adulthood. I became so comfortable with it, I didn't even know how to be happy in the flesh, much less free in spirit. And because I didn't trust, not even Christ, until the Lord convicted me that I became hungry to know him. <clears throat> and he used that very one that hurt me to teach me to trust in him. And in so doing, I was able to extend the love of Christ in my words and my deeds with him. Trust in the Lord, wearing his spirit, and knowing the truth gives freedom. Mm -hmm. Colossians 3, verse 10 says, And have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge, 
after the image of him that created him. It's so easy to be bound by anger. When I think of it, we're generally angry because we feel wronged or harmed in some way. And that makes us believe that we're right, maybe even justified. Then comes the blame game, the name calling, ill feeling, and feeling ill because, you know, it hurts us physically. And think about it socially also. I mean, who wants to be around someone who's angry? It's awkward. It's unpleasant. And we tell ourselves that we want to be left alone. And of course, that's where our physical nature can best corrupt our mind. So it puts me in mind of that well-worn sweater we like to wear when we're feeling bruised. It carries the history of our tragedies. It's ours. We own it. We know it. We even like to, enough to take it out sometimes. It's a dear, familiar companion. It's so easy to curl up with and share our woes and hurts. And you know, anger, it doesn't judge us. It's passionate and it's personal. And it allows us to feel the way we want. And we, when we put it on, we like to wear it for a while. So what must we do to shed our dear companion? Engage our prerogative, ladies, yes. Change our mind. We can do that, right? I'm sure there are husbands out there that would agree. Take off that old ratty sweater and put on the fresh new outfit that makes you feel free. Ephesians 4, 22 through 24, says that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Ephesians 4, 23, and be ye renewed by the spirit of your mind. And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. 1 Thessalonians 5, 9 tells us, For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. When we are renewed in the spirit of our mind, we have no place for anger. But now seek those things which are above, as mentioned in Colossians 3, verse 1. So how we change our mind? Don't seek revenge. We're covered. Instead, show grace. Assist and pray for your enemy. Our ways are not God's ways. It can very well be an opportunity he's provided for you to minister to another person. Romans 12, verses 19 through 21 Dearly beloved, avenge yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in doing the, thou shalt reap coals of fire on his head. Do not overcome evil. I'm sorry, do not be overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. 1 Thessalonians 5.22 says, abstain from all appearance of evil. We have a responsibility to be an example into the righteousness of God. When we show anger, it's just the opposite, even if we believe justified in our feelings. Brother James, chapter 1, verse 18 through 20. Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, 
slow to speak, and slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Ladies, I hope this lesson will help us all through difficult times now as we endure isolation. For some of you may feel more surrounded than isolated. With children underfoot all day, and we know what happens when the children become bored and restless, siblings battle over the smallest things, constantly wanting something, clinging and face it, not understanding the sudden change in their lives as well. Some of you may find it harder now for that alone tone, time while in isolation. Making time with the Father is even more important now. Don't hold on to frustration, disappointment, and bad feelings all day. Give it to the Lord so you will get the rest you need to face another day according to his will. Paul addresses this very thing in Ephesians 4, verses 26 through 27. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun don't go down upon your wrath. <laughs> and neither give place to the devil. Paul continues instructing us to show grace and forgiveness in Ephesians 4, 29 through 32. Encourage those around you. It's a trying time for all. Humble yourself to the Lord. He doesn't make mistakes. Forgive as he is forgiven. Ephesians 4, 29 and 32 tell us, let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the he hearers. And be ye kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. I thank you ladies for joining us today. I thank you for taking time to listen to what the Lord has put on my heart through this study. I pray for your families during this time of isolation and the pandemic. And I also encourage you, ladies, continue to stay prayerful, continue to spend time with the Lord, I thank you. What a wonderful message. Thank you, Sonia, for sharing what God has uh, laid on your heart. It was awesome. So I'm going to uh, speak. My name is Glenda Selectman, and um, I'm going to pick up on uh, my verse that I'm going to focus on is Colossians 3.12. And the word that I'm going to focus on today is kindness, as we can see up here on the screen. So we're going to go ahead and read this. And it says, put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved bowels of mercy, kindness. And I folded that word there. Humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering. That is Colossians 3.12. So what I want to do is, on our next slide, I want to ask you a question, and I want you to think about this question. It says, what are you wearing? As you can see, there's a silhouette here, someone holding a book, reading the Word of God, and I'm asking you this question, what are you wearing? And the question is, what are you wearing as far as kindness? So let me give you a little history. So here we have, we have the who, what, when, where, and why. So Paul wrote the letter to the Colossians church. The what is the letter, it challenges believers in Colossae to look to Jesus Christ. And I, I underlined that because I want to focus on that because that's what Paul, he wanted them to look to Jesus Christ through whom he would, are all saved. Paul emphasizes the importance of the cross. And it's so important to remember the cross. 
Jesus Christ is Savior and only by his blood that we are saved. We are not saved by works or anything. It is by, by, by grace, by his grace. We are saved by Jesus Christ's blood. When? During the late uh, century, possibly as late as um, 90 AD when this was written. Where? Paul was in prison during this time and he was in prison in Rome. And then why? The church was under attack. They was doing false, false, they were hearing false teachers and was teaching false doctrine. Paul addressed that Jesus Christ as creator and redeemer. And was it was non-negotiable. There was no negotiation in this. He might bring his wisdom, and he we're referring to Paul, his wisdom to bear on this difficult and trying situation. He wanted the church to know God in his full greatness and glory. He didn't want them to know part, partial, or just a little bit to the left or the right. He wanted to know the fullness of it. So when you look at this right here, it says Paul instructs the Colossians to put on kindness. So when we think about the word kind, kindness, you know, we think about being nice, um, talking to people, having a good personality, having a good attitude. You know, you want to be kind to people. Not only people, there are things out there that you need to be kind to. I mean, we've got animals, people have animals, dogs, cats, things like that. But we want to put that kindness on. And when I say put on kindness, I'm not talking about just picking up a, a item. There's a scarf that I put around my neck today. This is not kindness. Kindness, I need to wear that in my heart. I need to show kindness. So a couple of verses I want you to turn to. So if you can turn to uh, Proverbs eleven seventeen, once you turn to that, what we're going to do, we're going to read that together. So here, the first verse, Proverbs eleven seventeen. are we all ready? Good. The merciful man doeth good to his own soul, but he that is cruel troubleth his own flesh. Notice I put the word good underlined. That is also part of being kind, being good. Now let's go over to Ephesians. And we're going to read this one together and speak and talk about this also. Everyone should be there now. Ephesians 4, 32. And be ye kind one to another. Okay, notice that verse when it breaks it down. One to another. It's not saying being kind just to yourself. Be ye kind one to another. Tender-hearted, okay, he wants you to be tender-hearted, soft, you know, understanding, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, forgiven us. So as, as individuals, when we think about the word kindness here, okay, right here at the bottom of this verse, even as God has, even as God, for Christ's sake, have forgiven you, okay? So think about it. If Christ can forgive us, we can be kind, and forgiving to one another also. I have one more verse for us to read together. Let's go ahead and go to Luke. All right, Luke 6, 35. Let's read that one together also. But love ye your enemies and do good. Again, here's that word good again, underline. And lend hoping for nothing again, and your reward shall be great. And ye shall be the children of the highest, for he is kind unto the unthankful and the evil. Now, on this verse right here, there's two words I did not underline, and I didn't underline them for purpose on purpose. So I want you to look at this, this word unthankful for me. And then the other one, unthankful and to the evil. Okay? So God's not just kind to people that are kind, okay? He's kind. He said he is kind unto the unthankful, those that don't care at all. They don't care nothing but about themselves. And to the evil, those that's running around doing, around doing things that are wrong, that are evil, treating other people evil. So why can't we be the same way kind and unthankful? That's the way Christ wants us to be as, as people also, as Christians. So I want you to think about some of the things that I just spoke to you about. And the main word I thought talk, talked about is kindness. So we're going to be putting on that kindness every day.
but what should kindness look like? I can't pick up a K and put it on or an I or in any of that, okay? Again, I'm wearing that in my heart, it's in my brain. It's covered, I covered myself, not physically with clothes, but just with the word of kindness. So our identity in Christ means we should look, okay? We should look like Christ, we should sound, think, and we should behave differently. So we should not be out there just wearing anything. As a lady, I should dress and present myself acceptable. I should sound. I should, words should not, filthy words should not be coming out of my mouth. I shouldn't be a loud, outspoken person. I shouldn't be rude. When I think, so we got to think about this one. Think, thoughts are in my head. Okay, when you think bad things, no one knows that but you and God. So you should not even think those bad things. And then my behavior should be totally different from those that are not saved. So when you look at that list, it's only four words. We should be able to look, sound, think, and behave differently than what those of the world are doing. It's all about what we choose. So every day, I think about this. When I get up, I can choose to be kind. I can choose not to be kind. But my goal is to be kind to one another. Okay, we're gonna, I'm going to wear that word kindness within my heart, within my brain, you know, just internally. That's what I'm going to be thinking about, kindness. And that it has nothing to do, again, about the physical clothes that we put on. So as you're getting dressed for your day, regardless if it's work, casual, school, whatever you're going, wherever you're going to, think about the word kindness. Embed that into your life for that day. All right, we have another verse up here. So I have Titus 3, 4, and 5. Can you turn to that verse, please? And then I'm going to talk a little bit about this. The first thing I want you to see, the word kindness again is in this verse. So it says, verse four, let's read that together, please. But after that, the kindness in awe and, and love of God, our Savior, toward man appeared. Okay, so there it is. Kindness again, the word, and the love of God. Okay, so again, that word, it means as we are getting ourselves together, kindness. Think about those kind thoughts that you can share with someone. And always remember too, as you're going through, you never know what that one kind thing may do to someone else. Let's look at verse four, read that one together. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. We are saved. If, if you are saved, these are the things that we need to do. We need to follow in the footsteps of Jesus Christ. And one of the things that God is commanding us to do is to be kind, have kindness. All right, so how do we apply that to our lives? Just every day as we go. One, we should be following Jesus Christ. So what I want you to just think about when you wake up as you're going through your day, am I following Jesus Christ? Number two, our faith should transform the relationships we have in every area of our lives. So it is not a part-time thing. Kindness is not part-time. It should go everywhere we go, in our home, church, in the world. So if you're at home, kindness to whoever's there with you, your family, your friends. At church, make sure you speak to others at church. Just don't get comfortable with the people that you're used to being with all the time. And then when we're out in the world, it's okay to be kind. I know a lot of times today, some people are shy away from being kind to other people. And they do that because you don't know how that person is going to react. I'll give you an example. Just say you're getting in your car. You just came from the grocery store. We all been doing that lately. You have your, your basket. You load up your groceries. You look over and you notice that you have an elderly person there that is struggling to get her groceries in. It's okay to go up and say, hi, ma'am. I noticed that you're having a little time, a difficult time with your groceries. Do you mind if I help you? Ask for permission. That is just being kind. 
just express that. I just want to help you. That's all. And usually most people are like, oh, yeah, that'd be awesome. Thank you. And the other thing is to take time to pray over kindness. And the reason why I say pray over kindness is because it's not natural for all of us. So if you know you struggle in that area and you know you have a hard time being kind, pray. I promise you, God will help you and he will guide you. He will direct you. He will give you verses that you need to focus on. Just pray. And here's more. Does kindness describe you in your role as a mom, a teacher, a wife, a friend, a daughter, a neighbor? Are we kind to each other there? And then I again, the last bullet point here says, pray, ask the Lord to help us show kindness to someone every day. So let's not just think about kindness as, oh, I'm going to be kind today. And then tomorrow, I don't know how I'm going to feel. Think about adding kindness to your life every day that you get up. So when you're spending that quality time with the Lord, if it's in the morning when you first wake up and you're off in your closet or wherever you are, it's just you and God, pray for that kindness because things are going to happen. I promise you, you're going to be on your way to work. Someone's going to cut you off. You're going to be going to the grocery store and somebody's going to say something rude. There's going to be things that's going to happen. That's why we need to pray and ask God to show us kindness. So this is your self-assessment. Take some time to think about this. Does kindness spread through your relationship with your, our neighbors? Are we humble? You know, there are going to be challenging times. Are we humble during that time? Are we kind? Are we gentle and patient with our family? And this one right here, right now, a lot of people are working from home. You have your children at home. You have your parents at home. You have the dog and cats, roommates. Wow, it can get very congested in your house at times where you sometimes used to just getting up, going to work, or even if you work from home. It's just you there usually. But now you're sharing the space. So those are going to be challenging times. It's okay to be challenging. But what we need to do is be kind about it. It's okay to say to your children or your animals that or your roommates are there. You know, be kind in how you express that to them, that you may need a little quiet. Are you compassionate as we welcome family and friends to your home? Are you kind? When um, my spouse says, hey, I want to have someone over, how, how's my attitude? Is it kind? It should be always. So ladies, it is time for some wardrobe adjustments. Okay, we notice in this picture right here, it's a whole bunch of clothes. Remember, we're not talking about clothes that we're putting on. We're talking about kindness. So is your attitude messy? Like these drawers right here, the clothes all over? Are you showing kindness? That's the question you want to ask yourself. I want to ask and challenge you, what are you wearing? And that's slide two also. So some additional verses that you can um, follow up on, Matthew 5, uh, 43 through 45, Romans 11, 22, Ephesians 2, 6, and 7. Take some time after you listen to this um, um, video. I want you to read those verses, pray to the Lord, challenge yourself, and just put on kindness. There's a link. If you have access to the, the web, just go ahead and click on that link. This song right here, if you listen to the lyrics of this song, is song the name of the song is uh, Better Than Life. And we sing this at Harvest. But the here's a couple of the, couple of the lyrics. And it says, your love is everlasting. I'm not going to sing, but it's kind of an upbeat song. It's an everlasting love. Your mercy is as new as an every rising of the sun and your loving kindness and then it repeats loving kindness and then it is better than life so i want to say i want to thank you for listening to me today um great study and then one more thing you can see up here on the screen when you download this document you're going to get these little cards and they're going to look like this i want you notice that there's eight I want you to cut them out. Once you cut them out, I want you to put your name on the back, share it with someone and put their name on there and then keep one for yourself. And I want to say thank you again and you have a great day.